Hi there, my name is Meg Bingle and I am the Associate Director of Admissions here at the University of Chicago Law School. Thank you for joining me today to learn a little bit more about UChicago Law. Um, I've got a couple of goals for today's webinar. First of all, I want to introduce you to the University of Chicago Law School. So we are a very unique learning community and I want to give you a little bit more information about what makes our community so special. I also want to tell you about the application process for JD admission. So how can you get yourself here to the University of Chicago for law school? Last but not least, I want to leave time for questions and answer. Um, for many of you, this you're going to be watching this as a recording. Um, so I'm going to direct your questions to our inbox at admissions at law.uchicago.edu. Without further ado, UChicago Law, a unique learning community. For those of you who have not had an opportunity to visit us, the University of Chicago Law School is located on the main campus of the University of Chicago which is in Hyde Park. Hyde Park is actually a neighborhood of Chicago. So we're in the city of Chicago. We're just a little bit farther removed from what would be considered the downtown. So, you know, if you've ever been to the Bean, if you've seen those like very pretty pictures of the dramatic skyline in Chicago, all of that is an area of the city called the Loop. Here at UChicago Law, we're about 15 to 20 minutes south of the Loop in Hyde Park. The cool thing about that is that you get the best of both worlds, right? Hyde Park has got that real kind of college feeling, right? Lots of green spaces. We got the main campus, we've got the college, the medical school. Um, all of that is here in Hyde Park, but you also have Chicago at your fingertips. So you've got the major world-class city right there 15 minutes away. As I said, we are a unique learning community. First of all, something that's very important about coming to the University of Chicago is that we are a national law school. If you are sitting out there and you're starting the process of thinking about coming into law school, you're going to be thinking about a lot of considerations. One of those considerations is going to be, hey, where are you going to practice at the end of three years? Coming to a place like you, Chicago, you might hear some people tell you that it's not going to let you go to anywhere but Chicago. They are flat out wrong. Only about 35% of our students end up staying in Chicago, and that's all self-selection. Here at UChicago Law, you can go wherever you'd like to go to practice. Um, this really is the type of community where you can go into our career services office and say, hey, you know, I want to practice X type of law in Y city, and we're going to work with you to make that happen. Another important thing about them being a national law school is that our students come from all over. Um, so I think in our most recent one-out class, if I'm not mistaken, we have something like students represented from 41 different states and 96 different undergrad institutions. And we are sitting here thinking about crafting a class in admissions. We're taking it very seriously that we want as many diverse perspectives as possible in our classroom. And we define that diversity very broadly um, to add to a really kind of unique and robust learning environment. Here at UChicago Law, something that truly sets us apart is that we are a small law school community. Um, each of our classes is only about 185 to 195 students, which has a lot of positive repercussions from that. So first of all, as a preliminary matter, because there aren't that many of you, you get to know your classmates very well, very quickly. And you know, it's just a really good thing to be going to law school with people that you're friendly with. It cuts down on competition, which is certainly something that I get asked about a lot on the road, right? How competitive is your law school? One of the things that I'm very happy to report is that competition is really kind of low here. You know, I won't lie to you and tell you that competition doesn't exist. Of course, of course it does. We are an elite law school, um, but it's really kind of more of an internalized competition. Like I am competing with myself for my optimal outcome versus a zero, zero sort of zero sum game sort of competition, uh, which is important because generally speaking, our students support one another. And I think that that's something that, again, really sets us apart. Um, it's also supported by our faculty members, right? Just because we have a small student community does not mean that we have a small faculty community, right? We still have a world-class faculty that teaches all kinds of different classes. But because there aren't that many students, they're actually able to get to know you. And something that I can tell you that I hear frequently from our alumni is that one of the things that truly made you Chicago unique and that sticks with them is that faculty mentorship. So having that small community means that all of us can get together and really get to know each other. Another kind of unique element of University of Chicago Law School is that we're on the quarter system. Um, quarter system is kind of different. I'm sure a lot of you might not be familiar with it. Um, at the outside, I should tell you that it's actually kind of a misnomer because um, here at the law school, there are actually only three quarters. So we have our fall quarter that starts towards the end of September and goes to about the end of December. Our winter quarter picks up in the first week of January and goes to about end of March, give or take. Um, our third quarter, the spring quarter, starts in April and goes to about the end of May or early June. So we don't have a summer quarter. A um, couple positives to the quarter system. First of all, in law school, you're going to absolutely love the quarter system because there are going to be so many classes here at Chicago that you are going to want to take. And having that quarter system is going to give you the flexibility to take about four extra classes on each year, which is really vital, 
um, to being able to explore all kinds of different parallels here and law parallels here at U Chicago. Um, also, the entire University of Chicago is on the quarter system. So one of the huge things that you're going to hear about U Chicago law, and it's something that I'm probably going to continue to bring up repeatedly throughout this presentation, is that U Chicago law is the home of interdisciplinary studies. So when you are hearing about things like law and economics or law and philosophy, chances are it is connected to the University of Chicago. Now, being on the quarter system and having the entire school be on the quarter system means that if you want to take a class outside of the law school, you're going to be able to do so because our classes match. Um, there's, of course, a standard that it has to be related to law. Um, but as you can imagine, here at UChicago Law, almost everything can be related to law. And that's really something that, again, kind of goes back to that interdisciplinarity is that we want you to kind of recognize that, that their law is never practiced in a vacuum. There's always all sorts of different intersections, which leads me to my next point. Here at UChicago Law, we have unparalleled theoretical exploration. What that means for you um, is that this is not the type of law school that you're going to come to and get a concentration in something. We really pride ourselves on having a very general legal education that allows for a lot of flexibility. Now, that's not to say that if you came to law school and you knew that you wanted to do a particular type of law, you weren't going to be able to take the classes and to do the clinics to do that. Obviously, of course you are. And you're going to have plenty of faculty mentorship helping you kind of navigate that path to get exactly where you want to be. But something that really sets you Chicago apart, and I can tell you, I answer this question constantly on the road and recruiting and in interviews, something that really sets us apart here at UChicago is that a lot of our students come in with a broad idea of what they want to do, right? Um, they're not exactly sure what the contours of their career is going to look like, but they kind of know sort of broadly what they want to do. And there will be a very linear path that lends itself in front of them, right? There will be classes, clinics, that first summer job, that second summer job, and then that first sort of career goal, um, all in that linear path. You know, that's law school everywhere in a lot of ways, right? That linear path. What sets you Chicago apart is that our students get themselves on that linear path and very successfully, if I don't mind saying so. They get themselves on that linear path and then they leverage the quarter system and our unique course offerings to really challenge themselves, right? We have about 170 classes to choose from in that second and the third year. Um, our students take advantage of that, right? They take a class that might be not required for the career path that they're going to go into, but simply because they're interested in it. And I think that that really speaks to sort of the curiosity that happens at UChicago and sort of this commitment to, as we say on our website, learning for learning's sake. And you're going to see a lot of that here at UChicago and it does set us apart. As part of that sort of learning for learning's sake, there's another element that goes into the law school education, which is clinical opportunities. Um, for those of you who have not been introduced to the wonderful world of legal clinics, um, basically a legal clinic is going to be an opportunity to work in a real live law firm, real live law clinic, real live law cases. Um, so you are going to be working with clients who are actually working their way through the legal system whether it's through criminal justice system, through a handful of our clinics, like we have a juvenile justice clinic that defends juveniles going through the criminal justice clinic. We have um, a federal clinic that's gonna show you criminal law on the federal level. Um, we have a prosecution and defense clinic and exoneration project. So you can learn as, many, as much as you'd like on the criminal law side of things. Um, but we also have different clinics. We have an environmental law clinic that currently is working on Clean Water Act cases. We have a corporate lab that can show you what it really means like to be like a corporate lawyer. We have one of my favorite clinics, which I'm not technically supposed to say, but I think it's really cool, um, the Innovation Clinic. So the Innovation Clinic is actually a partnership between the Booth School of Business and the Law School. Booth presides the sort of startup incubator side of things, so the business recommendations. We provide the law side of things. So it's really kind of living proof of that sort of interdisciplinarity that I was talking to before. Our clinical program is going to be open to you in your second and your third year. Um, here at UChicago Law, you do not apply into our clinics as you might at other law schools. You register for our clinics the same way that you register for classes. So you rank them, it goes into a computer, it sets out matches. Um, obviously, third years get to go first, so they almost always get their first choices. Um, but even outside of that, in the last several years, all of our students who have wanted to do a clinic have been able to do a clinic, and the vast, vast, vast majority of them have been able to do their first choice clinic. Sometimes it's just a matter of if you wanted to do, you know, our international human rights clinic in the fall quarter, you might have to wait to the winter or the spring. And of our students who choose to do a clinic, many of them will do more than one. So we really recognize here at UChicago Law that clinical education is vital to kind of creating that whole package so that and when you graduate at the end of three years, you are ready to dive right into your legal practice. Last but not least here at UChicago Law, we have an extreme commitment to public interest that takes the shape of many different ways. Um, so first of all, you know, I was just expounding on our clinical education program. Right now we have about 15 legal clinics 
Of those clinics, 13 of them are public interest oriented. So the vast majority of our students here at East Chicago are going to do their clinical education in public interest, and that actually really fits with what they're interested in. Um, we also have all kinds of other ways for you to get involved in public interest. For example, if you're a first year student and you want to get involved, we have a pro bono initiative. That's a pledge that you take at the beginning of your three years of law school where you commit to doing 50 hours of pro bono work. Our pro bono director will work with you to kind of find all kinds of unique opportunities so you can get involved as a 1L and then continue that through your second and your third year. Um, we have all sorts of spring break trips that will take you across the country to explore different legal opportunities over the two week spring break that we have. Um, we also have a very important financial aid offerings, right? Because if you want to go into public interest, you want to also be able to live. Um, and an important part of that is going to be our guaranteed summer fundings. So we have guaranteed summer stipends of up to $5,000 for both your first and your second summer if you go into a qualifying public interest job. We also have a generous loan or payment program that will work with you after you graduate from law school to pay back your loan on a year by year basis, assuming that you meet a handful of criteria like having a qualified public interest job. Generally speaking here at the law school, you're gonna find quite a few students who are interested in public interest. who are also gonna be supported in our career services office by our director of public interest. So if you are sitting out there and you're thinking, man, I really wanna go into public interest, please consider the University of Chicago Law School. We've got a lot of opportunities and a lot of people who are here excited to support you to get into that career that you're thinking. Outside of the classroom, we also have all kinds of different exciting things happening here at UChicago. Um, a big part of our life here on campus is gonna be our student organizations. We have about 60 different student organizations that really kind of run the gamut. Um, we of course have affinity organizations to do wonderful programming. We have social organizations. We have organizations committed to different types of law. Um, a big part of what our student organizations do is bring speakers to campus for something that we've called lunchtime learning. Um, so every day at lunch here when the school's in session, um, there's basically a different lunch talk happening. And most days there's more than one. Um, a lot of those lunch talks are going to be sort of practical, like, hey, I want to be a criminal defense attorney. What does that mean? Um, I want to be an environmental defense attorney. What does that mean? I want to go into big law. What does big law mean? I want a clerkship. What does that mean? Um, our student orgs do a really good job of bringing alumni and other people back to campus so that you can really kind of learn what that means, especially in that one o year when you're doing so much discovering. Um, so that's one sort of track that they have in the lunch talks. Um, the bigger track and the one that probably happens more frequently, believe it or not, is our student organizations inviting fascinating people to campus to talk about current issues in law, to talk about their research, to talk about upcoming cases in the Supreme Court. Um, one of my favorite talks from last year was actually fascinating. So one of our clinics, the Institute for Justice Clinic on Entrepreneurship, was working with a group of food trucks who were actually involved in a lawsuit over restrictions in Chicago about where they could have their food trucks. Um, so the city of Chicago put out these ordinances that were kind of restricting um, the food trucks ended up litigating it and one of our clinics was helping them litigate that case. Um, they went to the trial court and ended up, they had to appeal it and they were appealing it up to the Supreme Court. Um, well, the lunch talk that we had uh, was their attorneys coming to Chicago and previewing the argument that they were going to do before the Supreme Court later that week and asking for feedback. Another really awesome part about that lunch talk, as in most lunch talks, um, the food trucks catered it as well. Um, so that kind of shows sort of what life is like here on campus, right? It's a very curious place where people are not just learning in the classrooms, they're learning all over the place, but also people are getting together. People really like having those sort of conversations about what's going on in the world. This is not the type of place where it's like quiet 24-7. There's always a lot of activity. A lot of it is going to be academic discourse, but a lot of it is going to be fun as well. You know, you've got, we also have something called these coffee mess and wine mess, which happen coffee messes every Wednesday morning, wine mess, wine mess is most Thursdays. Those are great opportunities to really kind of get together with your classmates, get together with your faculty, get together with your favorite admissions team um, to kind of catch up and see how it's going. Again, you know, I'm coming back to this sort of idea, but one of the best parts about coming to UChicago Law School is that you are joining a community and you will feel like a community here. You will be able to engage with all kinds of different lives, both inside and outside the classroom. Another big part of that is what I've got here on the screen here, ideas and initiatives. You know, we've got really great journals. So if you are interested in academic research and writing, we've got the U Chicago Law Journal, we've got the Legal Forum, we've got our International Law Journal. Um, those are great opportunities to do some really heavy research and academic writing. Um, we have something called the Catholic Leadership De Development Initiative. That is actually a program that we run during our orientation program. It's gonna give you the opportunity to, first of all, get to know your classmates really well, um, but also develop some skills that are gonna be really important for being a lawyer. 
things like active listening, team building, team management, all of those skills that we might not necessarily teach you in a law classroom, but are still gonna be vital to your legal career. We teach you that at the very beginning so you can hone those skills the whole three years through. We also have a course, a handful of joint and dual degree programs. You know, I talked at the very beginning of this um, slideshow about the interdisciplinarity at the U Chicago. Well, part of that is gonna be through our joint degree programs. Um, we're very excited this year that we were able to announce a three-year JD MBA program, which I will discuss in more detail later. So set that one aside. Um, otherwise, we have joint and dual degree programs with almost all of the divisions across campus. Um, how that works is you apply to the law school and you apply to the other degree of your choice. If you get into both of them, we will then work with you to kind of create a curriculum that works for you. Um, sometimes we're able to shape a little bit of the time off by credit sharing. Other times you're going to be doing them concurrently. You're going to be doing them in a way where you'll do full credits of JD, full credits over there. Um, regardless of how that actually works out, we're always excited to work with you. Same thing if you wanted to pursue something like a JD PhD. Um, we also have two programs that are not degrees, um, but are certificate granting programs. So if you were out there sitting there singing that, hey, like, ooh, I really like law and business, but I'm not ready to commit to a JD MBA, the Doctor of Business Leadership Program is going to be for you. That's a three-year certificate granting program that you do while you're doing your JD. So it's not an extra tuition, it's not an extra degree, it's a certificate. Um, you take a handful of classes with, that are taught by Booth faculty members. Um, you get a mentor out there in the alumni community and you get to be a part of a cohort um, where you really get to be around like-minded people who are also in law and business. We also have something called the Certificate in Health Administration and Policy. For those of you out there that are interested in sort of like health law and administration and policy, definitely consider this program. Again, it's, it's a certificate granting program, so it's not a second degree, not a second tuition, um, but that's going to give you an opportunity to get into a cohort with students that are here at the law school, at the business school, at the social services school, the public policy school, and the medical school. And you go through a handful of, handful of classes together, which is, again, a really awesome way to kind of see the sort of law that you're interested in from multiple perspectives. Last one. I've got a couple of um, slides here that are gonna be about numbers to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. So on the left side of your screen, you're gonna see our sort of um, demographic information. So importantly, school, only about 600 students. Um, this gives you a breakdown of the classes that are gonna be um, first, second, and third year. Um, so you get an idea of sort of what's up. I am very proud of the current 1L class because they are 51% female, I will full heartedly admit. Um, very proud of that. Um, but as you can see, you know, I've talked about the commitment to diversity. We really do have that commitment. It's something that's very important to us. But again, it's also defined very broadly. Um, so we're taking into account all sorts of different things when you're looking at your application, um, which kind of leads to that right side of the screen. So a hallmark of the UChicago Law Admissions Office is that when we are looking at a file, we are looking at it in a holistic way. We are not just cherry picking LSATs and GPAs. I need to repeat that for all of you out there. We are not just cherry picking LSATs and GPAs. We look at every single file that comes into this office and we look at every element of that file. Um, obviously, you should cover a lot here. We're big on data, we're big on the quantitative research. How I can demonstrate to you, if you look at this, left, at this right side column, please pay attention to the LSAT ranges. That demonstrates that we have that sort of holistic process, right? You look at our LSAT range, if you look at our GPA range, it shows you that we really are looking for the whole package. So when you are sitting out there, Thinking about applying to us, keep that in mind, right? We want to know as much about you as possible, which I will, of course, discuss in a little bit more detail when I get into our application requirements. This is a helpful graphic that kind of shows you a little bit about employment opportunities. This is the class of 2018. That's the only class we have reported right now. We report these at the 10 month out mark, so we're still waiting on the class of 2019. Um, actually, that's probably coming in soon, though. Um, regardless, it's all very exciting stuff because our employment rate really hovers around that 98%. 99%. Um, a lot of times that number isn't 100% because we have something like a PhD student. Um, a couple of years ago, and I can't remember exactly what year, the number was right around 98 or something like that because we had a Rhodes Scholar. And it, get this, you are actually counted as unemployed for the American Bar Association statistics if you have a Rhodes Scholarship. Regardless, that is a tangent. Let me tell you a little bit more about the, chart, the chart that you're looking at. Um, first of all, the number that I want to highlight the most is that big yellow chunk. Importantly there, that is our clerkship number. In this class of 2018, it was 27%. I think in the class of 2019, it was, it's gonna be closer to like 28%, 29%. Clerkships are big here at UChicago. If you are interested in doing a clerkship, which for those of you who have not yet heard that term yet, a clerkship is basically like a post-doctorate. It's a year or two after you graduate from law school working for a judge, 
So there are opportunities now for you to work for a little bit and then go back to a clerkship, but that's something you'll learn later on. Regardless, the cool thing about a clerkship is that it's going to really give you an opportunity to see law up close, to work with a judge, to do a lot of really detailed legal research, and to write a lot, which is important in developing that skill set and really honing the things that you learned in law school and polishing and refining them, so that when you get into practice, you're going to be an even better lawyer. Now, I often get asked, you know, why is U Chicago Law's clerkship number so extraordinary? Like, how are you getting it there? Um, there's a lot of resources that are going to build up around you if you are interested in a clerkship. Um, the first one is going to be our director, our Office of Career Services. Um, first of all, we have a director of clerkships who sits in that office. She is going to work with you starting your first year of law school so that you understand the clerkship process um, and then work with you hand by hand to do your clerkship process together. Um, she has a wonderful resource. She's a really great counselor on clerkships, right? Because one of the beautiful things about coming to the University of Chicago is that in a lot of instances, you actually get a little bit of agency in your clerkship decision. So you're going to have that opportunity to kind of sit down and think like, what do I want out of my clerkship, right? Am I looking for geography? Am I looking for a type of law? Am I looking for an ideology? And how can I tailor my clerkship search to that particular want or need? Um, she's also going to be really helpful because something you're going to learn is that there is no sort of standardization to the clerkship application process. Every judge has their own deadline, they've got their own requirements, um, and she has really made it her own that she's going to make sure that every application that comes out of UChicago law is in strict compliance with whichever deadlines and standards that the judge puts out there. So that's one big chunk of what happens here. The other big chunk, and arguably it actually might be a little bit more important, is our faculty members. Our faculty members are very involved in the clerkship process. First of all, they're almost certainly going to encourage you to do a clerkship. I was talking to a, a student the other day who was telling me that he wasn't thinking about a clerkship and sat down with one of his professors and the professor's like, well, you're going to do a clerkship, right? And the kid's like, oh, you know, I'm not sure. And he's like, well, you're going to do a clerkship, right? Lo and behold, guess who's doing a clerkship next year, right? So our faculty members are going to encourage you to do that because they recognize how wonderful these opportunities are. Um, they're also, again, going to be helpful in that counseling side of things, helping you figure out what judges you should apply to. Um, they also, of course, doesn't hurt. They have a lot of friends out there in the community, a lot of judges that they know. So they'll encourage you if they think it's a right fit, like, hey, maybe you should be looking at this judge. Um, another huge part of our faculty involvement in the clerkship process are going to be the letters of recommendation. That goes back to kind of what I was talking about before, right? Here at UChicago Law, you're really going to have the opportunity to get to know your faculty members, and they're going to get the opportunity to know you. So when they sit down to write you a letter of recommendation, it is going to be a meaningful letter of recommendation. And let me just tell you right now, I read thousands of those a year. You can definitely tell a difference when someone knows you versus when they don't know you. Um, so again, I think that that is kind of what's tipping the scales into us getting almost 30% of our classes going directly into clerkships. I should also highlight another component of that is that our, so many of our students have been going into clerkships and we've been hearing such positive feedback that it's also becoming like a perpetuating cycle where judges are hearing it, seeing and hearing how awesome our UChicago Law graduates are, and they're clamoring for more clerks. The other big chunk on this graduation, on this employment chart, is that red one. Now, that red one is going to be people going into directly into private firms. For those of you that are sitting out there thinking about public interests, this might be kind of jarring to you, right? You might be like, ooh, I thought Meg just said UChicago Law has a very robust public interest community. What's happening with this graph? Let me give you a little bit more context. Um, first of all, I wasn't lying to you. There absolutely is a very robust public interest community here. And despite the fact that people are in this chart choosing private firms, it doesn't negate that actually exists here. To give you a little bit more context to this sort of chart, first of all, I'll recognize that, you know, a lot of our students are choosing to go into private firms for their very first job, right? This is not what they're doing three years from now. It's not what they're doing five years from now. This is literally just that 10 month mark. And the reason why so many students choose to go into that private firms as their first job is that, first of all, private firms have the resources to train you to be a very good attorney. A lot of public interest organizations do just simply don't have those resources. They don't have the ability to send you to fancy trainings or to do all of the things that private firms are able to do. They do, however, at the private firms have pro bono clinics. Almost every big law firm has an, a commitment to pro bono and allows its lawyers to work on pro bono cases majority of those cases are going to be staffed by second, first, second, and third year attorneys. So even though you're going to work for a private firm, you can still keep those public interests sort of interests sharp um, by working in the pro bono clinic. Um, last but not least, you know, a lot of these sort of private firms are going to be offering you very generous salaries. Um, so sometimes when you see that six-figure check coming in, um, it's hard to say no to that at the, at the outset. Now, 
what I do want to highlight, and I don't have the graph here because I'm trying to keep it tight, which I'm not doing a great job of, but what's interesting is that just because these students are starting in private firms does not mean that that's where the trajectory of their career is going to go. Many of these students actually boomerang into traditional public interest jobs at the three, five, seven, and 10 year mark. Um, so as the farther you get out from the law school, the little bit more even these numbers become. Um, and you'll see that in our alumni community, right? When you're out there, if you do land here at East Chicago Law and you're talking to our alums, you'll see that they have these very dynamic careers where they've experienced different things and they're better lawyers for it. I mentioned this before, but again, that's something that's very important is that if you come to the University of Chicago, you are not stuck here in Chicago. Now, frankly, no one is ever stuck here in Chicago. Chicago is a pretty extraordinary city. Um, that being said, we have top five markets. So Chicago, about 35, 36% of the class ends up here. That is entirely self-selection. People fall in love with the city of Chicago. Sometimes people actually even literally fall in love in Chicago and they wanna stay because their partner is here. Um, but outside of that, our top markets are gonna be New York, DC, California, and Texas. But just to reiterate what I said, and you can see it here, right? If you want to go somewhere, we can work with you to make that happen. Your law degree from the University of Chicago is portable. It will take you wherever you'd like to go. So I just ran through that very quickly. That was kind of a handy primer on life here at UChicago. And now I want to transition into a little bit more about the JD application process. Um, I should say this at that, should say this though, um, for those of you out there that might not be thinking about JD admissions, Maybe you're thinking about our LLM program, our MLS program, or our JSD program. Um, I would encourage you to reach out to lawgrad at uchicago.edu. So that's L-A-W-G-R-A-D at uchicago.edu for more specific information about the application process for those programs. This section of the webinar is literally only going to cover the JD side. So if you're thinking LLM, if you're thinking JSD, if you're thinking MLS, please email lawgrad at uchicago.edu. For those of you still with me, thinking about the JD process, let's get into the nitty gritty about how you get here so that you can experience all the wonderful things I just described. So first of all, some helpful dates. Um, we have an early decision program here at the University of Chicago. So if you have sat through this webinar and you have thought, oh my gosh, Meg, this is absolutely amazing. This is the school that I wanna to go to. It's my number one choice. I would encourage you to think about our early decision program. In the early decision program, you have to apply by December 1st but you're guaranteed a decision on your law application by the end of the year. So about January 1st, give or take. Um, important things to note about our early decision program. It is binding. So if you apply to us and you get admitted, you will have to pull your applications from the other schools. Um, another important element is if you are thinking about the early decision program, but financial aid is going to be a massive concern of yours, think very closely um, because you will have to decide whether or not you want to come to us um, before you will get your financial aid award because those usually come out Mid, mid to late February, give or take. Um, the important thing about early decision is that, you know, that definitely signals to us how serious you are about New Chicago. So there's absolutely a positive inference from that, but it's also just a matter of thinking about those other considerations that we've got the best sort of law school experience for you. Outside of our early decision program, we have our regular decision program. Um, the regular decision deadline is March 1st, but I want to highlight this. We have rolling admissions here at New Chicago. So the earlier you apply to law school, the better. Um, so if you're sitting out there listening to this now, I'm hoping that you're kind of thinking ahead. Um, try to get your applications in early. We almost always open our application between September 1st and September 15th. If you know you want to come here, get it, get it in early. Um, it really does make a difference because there's more spots available in the class. There's more money in the financial aid pool. So think about that. Rolling admissions. The earlier you apply, the better. Um, with respect to the rest of the admissions timeline, um, we started admitting regular decision towards the end of January, early February. Financial aid follows soon after that. Um, typically, we have admitted students programming throughout the spring. Um, and then we have a deposit deadline of about May 1st, give or take. And all of that is, of course, communicated to you if you do get admitted. Now I kind of want to get into some of the elements of the JD application. So, First of all, for those of you who are thinking about applying to law school, you are probably getting very familiar with LSAC.org. Um, everything for our application is primarily going to go through LSAC.org. So if you have not created an account, I encourage you to do so. Um, LSAC is also going to be the people who administer the LSAT, so the LSAT. Um, so you're probably going to be very familiar with them if you're thinking about applying to law school. Um, as for the elements of our application, you have an e-application that you fill out through LSAC.org. They ask for a handful of demographic information and has the sort of instructions that you're going to need to follow up to need to follow to apply to us. Um, we're going to request all of your undergraduate and graduate transcripts. 
all of those transcripts are going to be submitted through LSAC and then pushed to us from LSAC. So all you need to do is upload them to LSAC. Um, for those of you who have done, um, you know, maybe a study abroad or maybe you're foreign educated, um, you still submit your transcripts through LSAC um, and they have a foreign transcript service that will actually, you know, translate them where need be and also give us a little bit more information so that we can put that sort of transcript into context. Um, we ask for all transcripts. So your undergrad transcripts, any master's degree you might have, any study abroad programs that you have, and all of that's going through LSAC. Um, we also, of course, require a standardized test. Um, we accept the LSAT and the GRE for JD admission and the, G the GMAT for JD MBA admission. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that on the next slide to kind of give you some more color context on that. We ask you for a resume. Cool thing about the law school application. The resume is a little bit different than what you might otherwise expect. And what I mean by that is that a law school application resume does not have to be just one page. Remember what I said about that holistic process, right? The more we know about you, the better. I like to describe the resume as kind of this catch-all document, right? If there is something really cool about yourself that you have not captured anywhere else, chances are it belongs in that resume. Use it. You know, maybe you wrote a really cool thesis. Maybe you're an artist. Maybe you've published in the Washington Post before. Like, whatever it may be, include that in that resume so that we can get to know more of you. Another big part of kind of getting to know you is going to be the letters of recommendation. At the law school, we require two letters of recommendation, but we accept up to four. We always have a preference for academic letters of recommendation. Um, you're coming to a school, so we want to know how you're going to, you know, sort of be able to handle school. That being said, I know that many of you are out there in the workforce and that you might want to have a work letter of recommendation. That is absolutely okay. We do accept work letters of recommendation. But when you're sitting down to think about who you're going to ask to write that recommendation, please consider that we want them to focus on your academic skills. We want you to focus on the skills that are going to allow you to succeed in the classroom. So that's things like writing, analytical, analytical thinking, those things that like you need in the classroom. Another important thing about letters of recommendation is please choose people who actually know you, right? I've talked about it a while ago with the clerkships, but we see letters of recommendation that come in sometime who maybe they're from a fancy senator or maybe they're from the fancy named you know, professor who taught the lecture um, but doesn't actually know you beyond your ID number. Um, that's not who we want to hear from. It's not so much the letterhead that we're worried about, it's more the content of the letter. So choose the chief of staff who could actually speak to your work fitness, or maybe choose the TA who was with you every day in a discussion group. Those are going to be more meaningful letters of recommendation that are really going to kind of, again, provide context to you in the classroom. Another big thing that we are asking for is our personal statement. Um, if you were anything like me, the personal statement was a bit of a struggle, right? It's weird writing about yourself in a way. But go back to that thing that I was saying before, holistic review process. The more we know about you, the better. This personal statement is a really classic example to kind of give us more information. Um, some of the kind of classic pitfalls that I see in personal statements, um, a lot of times I will see people that narrate their resume. Goodness gracious, I read your resume, I got that. If you're not providing more, that's just really a wasted opportunity, right? I think a better way of handling that is maybe picking one formative experience and writing about it. Um, or maybe, you know, you want to tell me something totally different. You know, our prompt for our personal statement is really broad. It's like, tell me about yourself. You don't have to tell me why you want to go to law school, but you certainly can. Um, you know, if you're out there thinking like, oh, God, I don't even know where to get started on writing a personal statement, visit our website. Go to law.uchicago.edu and search in the Google bar personal statement. We've actually culled together a handful of personal statements from current students and, and former students actually at this point. Um, and they'll kind of show you and give you kind of a good guidepost of like what we mean when we say like, you do not have to give us, you know, your entire life story in a personal statement. It only should be about two to three pages anyway, so you don't really have that space, but that website will give you a helpful sort of starting guide to getting off the ground there. Another thing that we actually require through LSAC is gonna be an application fee. Um, in some instances, we are able to grant fee waivers but those are a very limited set of circumstances for things like veterans, people who have done the Peace Corps, Teach for America. Um, we, also set, we also participate in the candidate referral service. Um, so if you are thinking about law school and you've gone on LSAC.org, I encourage you to sign up for that candidate referral service. Um, that is of course done sort of throughout the fall. So I can't guarantee that we're gonna do that, but it's something that we have done in the past. So kind of keep your eyes peeled on that. Um, the last requirement of our application elements is the interview. Um, we only do 20 minute Skype interviews. So whether you are across campus or across the world, you're gonna be giving us a 20 minute Skype interview. Um, those are by invitation only. So by applying to the law school, you are not guaranteed an interview. In fact, we don't, couldn't possibly interview everyone, unfortunately. Um, so you wait for the invitation. You cannot request an interview. 
Um, interviews are basically given to people that we want to know more about, right? We've got your file, we want to know a little bit more about you. Um, if you get an interview request from us, please take us up on it. Um, I can tell you that I do the vast majority of our interviews here. It's probably going to be me on the other side of Skype, just wanting to get to know you. Please don't panic. It's not supposed to be a stressful interview. Literally, I'll ask you some questions about your resume. I'll ask you about why you want to come to law school, why you want to come to U Chicago, besides for the fact that you saw an amazing webinar that I did. Um, so have some of that preparation and being able to think about that. But otherwise, don't worry about it because it really is an easy process. Um, on the right column, we have some helpful little notes. Again, I talked about LSAC. You need those sort of um, that you need that account and everything goes through there. Um, same thing with the foreign transcripts. I said I would talk about standardized tests. Um, we accept the LSAT and the GRE for JD admission and the GMAT for JD MBA admission. Um, important things about the LSAT, that comes to us automatically through LSAT.org. So there's nothing that you need to do except take the LSAT and then it comes to us directly. For those of you that are thinking about timing, there's a couple of things that kind of go on with that. Like for example, you know, we're only going to take the October LSAT. That's the last LSAT you can take for early decision. Um, but again, those are kind of ad hoc, and I encourage you to check out our website for those sort of specific twists. Um, otherwise, we're going to accept the LSAT or the GRE for JD admissions. LSAT comes to us directly. GRE and GMAT, you actually have to go to their websites and push them to us. So if you're going to see submitting those exams, you need to kind of think about that carefully. Um, at this time, we are still getting the vast majority of LSATs. Um, we have seen some GREs. There's some GREs that have gotten admitted that are running around our class school now. Um, we don't have significant data on that yet, so we're still only sharing medians on the LSAT. You know, I recognize in today's world, we might take the LSAT more than once. That is okay. We are going to take your highest score. Um, if you take multiple LSATs, though, and there's a big jump, I would encourage you to submit a one-page addendum kind of explaining that. That does make a difference. Um, we also are going to get all of your LSAT scores for the last five years. Um, so when you sort of apply to law school, all of those will come to us. You must have a valid LSAT score, so it must have been taken within the next five years for your file to be considered complete. Um, same thing with the GRE and the GMAT, those are all five years. Um, with the GMAT, I'm going to talk about that next because of our new three-year JD MBA program. Um, in the past, we have always had a JD MBA program, of course, because within the law school share so many things in common. Um, but right now we're excited because we can offer it in an accelerated way, so in a three-year way. A um, couple of interesting fun facts. First of all, most important of all, if you are interested in our three-year JD MBA program, ignore everything I just said about the LSAC, please visit the website, go to Chicago Booth, search three-year JD MBA. There's a specific set of instructions there. You are going to apply predominantly through the Booth School of Business application. There's additional forms that you need to fill out, but again, all of that is on the website. So if you want to do the three-year program, please go to the Booth website. That's where you're going to get the majority of the information on that. There are also going to be some helpful things on the timeline. Um, you know, you can see here that I've got that January 7th about, March 19th about. Those are the, the dates that we had this year. They're going to be relatively similar next year, but they're not, probably not going to be exactly that. Um, important to note on the three-year JD MBA, you will interview in person with Booth, but you will still interview via Skype for the law school. Um, there will be one set tuition and one scholarship for the joint program. Um, so lots of fun things happening in that three-year JD MBA program. The best place to get more information on that is to continue to follow the Booth website. It's a joint website that has information on all of that. It's also the best place when you're thinking about anything related to that three-year program. Go and check that. There's also a very robust FAQ. Now, on to financial aid, another very significant part of the law school experience. Um, here at UChicago Law, about 80% of our students' bodies will receive financial aid in the form of scholarships. So we have merit and need-based financial aid. Um, for merit-based financial aid, when you apply to the law school, you are automatically considered for it. We use that same holistic review process that I talked about with admissions with respect to our financial aid offerings, right? So it's, again, not just cherry-picking LSATs and GPA. There really is a lot more to it. Um, of our students who choose to, to come here, 80% um, will end up on financial aid in the form of scholarships. 60% will also end up taking out loans. Um, if you want to be considered for need-based financial aid, it is an additional form that you fill out after you get admitted. So what you're sitting out there, if you're thinking about applying, all you really need to do right now is apply. That gets you automatically considered for merit aid. After you get admitted, there's a whole process for considerations for need-based aid. Um, for those of you that are foreign students, um, please note that you will not qualify for federally sub subsidized loans, um, but you will qualify for UChicago institutional loans. Um, so if you are foreign, foreign and you're thinking about, um, you know, trying to come into law school, just make sure that you've got a couple of extra considerations. Um, for all things financial aid oriented, if you do have those questions, please email us at financialaid at law.uchicago.edu. 
which kind of brings us to the end of the webinar. I know that I talk very fast. It's kind of crazy. Um, and I threw a lot of information at you. Um, if you have questions, if you have questions related to admissions, if you have questions related to the University of Chicago Law School, to the city of Chicago, please email us at admissions at law.uchicago.edu. We are looking forward to hearing from you. Um, other than that, thank you so much for joining with me and you have a wonderful day.